I got the strangest sensation when I was in that, that area, in that place. I absolutely knew that I was standing on Richard's grave. The bones of King Richard III hold a secret that was never meant to be found. When his skeleton was dug up from under a parking lot, everyone thought the biggest mystery was solved, but they were wrong. The most shocking fact is what his DNA revealed. Not about him, but about the kings who came before him. We have a break. It doesn't mean that the skeleton isn't Richard, because what we have is the very strong evidence triangulated with two living day relatives with the mitochondrial DNA. Geneticists uncovered a hidden break in the royal bloodline, a 500-year-old scandal that historians somehow missed. This discovery goes far beyond identifying a lost king. It questions the very foundation of the monarchy, the DNA mismatch. In 2012, the impossible happened. A team of archaeologists acting on historical maps and a good deal of hope began digging under a city council parking lot. And you can see this everywhere in history. The most amazing discoveries happen in the most ordinary places. Just days into the dig, they found a skeleton. It was a man in his early 30s with clear battle wounds and, most shockingly, a severely curved spine. The most shocking fact is that this matched the historical descriptions of Richard III, who passed at 32 and was famously described as having uneven shoulders. But this incredible archaeological find was just the opening act. The real drama began when scientists took the bones to the lab. To prove this was truly the lost king, they needed more than just a crooked spine and battle scars. They needed a genetic fingerprint. The plan was simple extract DNA from the ancient bones and compare it to living relatives. You see, there are two special types of DNA that act like ancestral name tags. The first is mitochondrial DNA, or mtDNA, which is passed down almost unchanged from a mother to all her children. Researchers traced Richard's family tree through his sister, Anne of York, and found a living descendant, a Canadian-born furniture maker named Michael Ibsen. If the skeleton's mitochondrial DNA matched Michael's, it would be a home run. The second type is the Y chromosome, which passes directly from father to son. Since Richard had no surviving children, scientists tracked down descendants of his distant male line relatives. If the Y chromosome from the bones matched theirs, it would be another slam dunk, proving he belonged to the Plantagenet royal dynasty. The lab work was intense. Ancient DNA is incredibly fragile, and scientists had to work in sterile, clean rooms to avoid contaminating the 500-year-old samples. They carefully drilled into a tooth and a dense leg bone to get the best material. After months of painstaking work, the results came in. The mitochondrial DNA was a perfect match to Michael Ibsen. The skeleton under the parking lot was, beyond any reasonable doubt, King Richard III. But here's where the story takes a wild, world-changing turn. When they looked at the Y chromosome, the results were a bombshell. There was no match, not even close. The king's paternal DNA didn't line up with his supposed living male relatives. This wasn't just a small inconsistency, it was a complete genetic break. The science had uncovered what is politely called a false paternity event. To put it mildly, it means that somewhere in the generations of kings leading up to Richard III, someone's father wasn't who the history books said he was. The royal bloodline was broken. The discovery didn't just identify a king, it had potentially delegitimized an entire dynasty. A secret in his genes suggested a scandal far worse than anyone ever thought. Before the DNA dropped its bombshell, the skeleton itself was already telling a dramatic story. What many overlooked in the initial excitement was just how perfectly the physical evidence lined up with the historical accounts of Richard III's life and brutal end. The archaeologists knew they had something special the moment they cleared the dirt away from the bones. The first major clue was the skeleton's age. Forensic analysis showed the man was between 30 and 34 years old when he passed. Richard III was 32 when he fell at the Battle of Bosworth Field. This was a perfect match. The location was just as compelling. Historical records said Richard was buried in the choir of the Greyfriars Church. The skeleton was found in what the dig team's maps indicated was the exact spot where the choir would have been. He was buried in a hastily dug grave, too short for his body, causing his head to be propped up awkwardly. There was no coffin, no shroud, 
just the body of a king dumped unceremoniously into the ground, which matched the story of a defeated monarch buried by his enemies. Then there were the wounds. The skeleton was covered in them. There were ten separate injuries, eight on the skull and two on the body. These weren't random marks. They were the scars of a final, desperate battle. One of the most significant was a large, sharp force trauma to the base of the skull, likely from an axe or a halberd. Another cut had sliced off a piece of the skull itself. These were vicious, fatal blows. Experts believe these head wounds were inflicted after his helmet had been knocked off or removed, suggesting he was surrounded and overpowered by his enemies. The thing nobody tells you is that this perfectly mirrors an eyewitness account from the battle, which described Richard being struck down after his helmet was torn from his head. There were also non-fatal wounds, including a slice to a rib and a cut on his pelvis. The most shocking fact about the pelvic wound is that experts believe it was a humiliation injury, likely delivered after his passing. Chronicles from the time report that Richard's body was stripped, slung over a horse, and paraded through the streets of Leicester, where it was subjected to further abuse. This wound, a stab through the right buttock that went all the way to the pelvic bone, was likely inflicted during this grim procession. But the most famous feature of Richard III has always been his physical deformity. For centuries, thanks largely to William Shakespeare, he's been known as a monstrous hunchback. The skeleton finally gave scientists a chance to separate fact from fiction. The man in the grave did not have a hunchback, a condition known as kyphosis. What he had was severe adolescent onset scoliosis, a dramatic S-shaped curve in his spine. This would have made his torso short for his height, and his right shoulder would have been significantly higher than his left. While it was a serious condition, it would not have been debilitating. With tailored armor and clothing, he could have hidden it to some extent, and it certainly didn't stop him from being a formidable warrior, as the battle wounds proved. So, Shakespeare's hunchback was an exaggeration, a piece of political propaganda designed to make Richard seem physically and morally twisted, but the core truth, that he had a visible spinal deformity, was real. All of this evidence, from the age and location to the wounds and the scoliosis, built an overwhelmingly strong case. People were watching this unfold in real time, and it seemed like a closed case. This had to be the king, but it was the DNA that would ultimately confirm it, and in doing so, unlock a much bigger mystery. The bones told the story of his violent end, but his blood held the real secret. Illegitimate kings. The DNA results created a historical paradox. The mitochondrial DNA proved the skeleton was Richard III. But the Y chromosome proved that somewhere in his paternal family tree, the royal bloodline had been broken. This wasn't just a piece of historical trivia. It was a political earthquake with a 500-year-long fuse. The most shocking fact is that this single genetic mismatch could call into question the legitimacy of some of England's most famous monarchs. So, what does a false paternity event really mean in this context? It means that a woman in the royal family had a child with someone other than her husband, and that child was raised and accepted as the legitimate heir. This could have happened at any one of 19 generations separating Richard III from his ancestor John of Gaunt, the point from which the two family lines in the DNA study diverge. Now, people watching this are probably wondering, where did the break happen? That's the million dollar question. Scientists can't pinpoint the exact generation where the event occurred without digging up more royal remains for testing, which is obviously not going to happen but they can speculate on the most impactful possibilities. One of the most explosive theories is that the break happened with King Edward III. Edward had a son named John of Gaunt, and John of Gaunt's descendants, the Beauforts, were key figures. If John of Gaunt was not Edward III's biological son, then the entire Lancaster dynasty that fought Richard's Yorkist family in the Wars of the Roses would have had no legitimate claim to the throne. You see, the whole war was based on who had the better bloodline. But there's an even more scandalous possibility, one that hits closer to Richard himself. What if the break happened with Richard's own father, Richard, Duke of York? There were rumors even at the time that Richard's older brother, King Edward IV, was illegitimate. If that were true, then Richard III, not his brother, 
would have been the rightful king all along. The thing nobody tells you is that Richard himself actually used these rumors to justify taking the throne from his young nephew. If DNA could prove this, it would completely vindicate him. But the historical fallout doesn't stop there. What many overlooked is what this means for the dynasty that defeated Richard, the Tudors. Henry Tudor, who became King Henry VII after winning the Battle of Bosworth, had a very shaky claim to the throne. His claim came through his mother, Margaret Beaufort, a descendant of John of Gaunt. If the break in the male line happened with John of Gaunt, then Henry Tudor's entire claim through the male line would be genetically baseless. His right to rule was built on a foundation that modern science suggests might be a lie. This single DNA test has thrown a massive wrench into centuries of accepted history. The right to rule for medieval kings was everything, and it was based almost entirely on the idea of an unbroken, God-given bloodline passed from father to son. The Y chromosome results from Richard III suggest that this sacred chain of succession was, at some point, a fiction. It raises the mind-boggling possibility that several kings of England, and potentially the entire Tudor dynasty, ruled without a legitimate biological claim to the throne. The search for a lost king ended up uncovering a far more profound secret, the king's new legacy. So where does this leave the mystery of King Richard III? For people watching this, it might feel like the story just got incredibly complicated. And it did. The DNA analysis that triumphantly identified his remains also left us with a historical cliffhanger that may never be fully resolved. The thing is, this is what happens when modern science collides with the messy reality of the past. Let's bring this all down to earth. The discovery of Richard's body and the subsequent analysis have, in many ways, rescued him from caricature. We now know he wasn't a monstrous hunchback, but a man with a severe medical condition who was still a capable warrior. The wounds on his skeleton confirm the stories of his courage in his final battle, charging headlong into the enemy in a desperate bid to win the war. The facial reconstruction, based on his actual skull, has given us a human face to replace the villainous mask created by Tudor propaganda. However, the most significant legacy of this discovery is the uncomfortable truth exposed by his Y chromosome. The evidence for a break in the royal bloodline is compelling. While we can't know for sure where it happened, the mere existence of this genetic secret fundamentally changes how we view the monarchy. Are we missing a key detail that could rewrite entire chapters of history? Absolutely. The idea that kings ruled and wars were fought over a claim to a bloodline that was potentially fraudulent is a stunning revelation. It suggests that power, politics, and human secrets were always more important than the sacred idea of legitimacy. People watching this might be wondering if all this happened overnight and if it's really true. The answer is yes, the science is solid. But the interpretation is where the debate now rages. Some historians argue that biological legitimacy didn't matter as much as accepted legitimacy. If everyone believed someone was the rightful heir, then for all practical purposes they were. The DNA of a long-dead king has shaken the foundations of a monarchy. What other historical truths are waiting to be uncovered by science? Let us know your thoughts below. Don't forget to like and subscribe.